Good morning, folks. Today we've got two major stories, one that could help scientists understand the cosmos and another that is really bad news for our planet. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com and check out the last 24 hours on our star. It was a mostly calm day with some minor shifting in the quiet coronal sector facing Earth on the south. We did see one eruption. It came as the northern filament that had turned through our view for a week finally lifted up, slightly darker, and slid out into space as a CME. As one might guess from the eruptive position, this burst is not heading at Earth, but north, away, and ahead of Earth's path around the Sun. Solar wind did have a minor intensification this morning, mostly in the speed. That was the light, weak CME from the central filament eruption five whole days ago, which is why it was so weak and unable to cause much geomagnetic unrest. The next stream is from the northern coronal hole, and if it can reach down enough to our heliographic latitude, we expect that stream Sunday. Until then, of course, we expected the uptick in seismicity, and I do so love it when those forecasts come through only to see the shake in the middle of nowhere and not near any humans. Always got to prefer that. Folks, deep space spectroscopy is getting fun, and we'll start this topic with the realization that any planet like Earth is going to potentially hide the biosignature of the atmosphere and make it more difficult to determine if the planet is habitable or inhabited. That does not apply to WASP-18b, which they figured out has a heavy carbon monoxide stratosphere, and no water. Ouch. But if we're talking deep space spectroscopy, the upgrade from Hubble to Muse blows everything out of the water. Just when we've zoomed enough that you think we're at the limit of visibility, we kick Muse into gear and realize that decades of technology upgrades are no joke. Not only can Muse see further, but in scattering each point of light they can ascertain distance, allowing for a remarkable fly-through animation of the deep cosmos all the way to what we know as the end of the universe. But that is not the big story here. Forget the hydrogen halos Hubble knew. Look how many Muse found. Found them everywhere, and included tons of galaxies Hubble didn't even know existed. These signatures directly influence the amount of known normal matter in the universe. And sure, they were dark before Muse, but we can see they are normal galaxies and their halos, not mysterious invented particles. And remember that all dark matter theories on those halos have been debunked and wouldn't have shown up like that on Muse anyway. Now, deep breath, into the deep end we go. Folks, in a study that virtually upends everything we know about supervolcano eruption patterns, scientists have sliced the timeline by a factor of 5 to 10. Whereas the old theory stated super eruptions occurred tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years apart, it would appear that number is closer to thousands or tens of thousands of years apart, leaving the expected wait time on Earth a mere fraction of what it once was between the events. Now, the authors don't want to scare anyone, and so they said that these waiting periods can vary by a large degree. And they say there really isn't any need to panic, even though the last super eruptions, 20 to 30,000 years ago, are significantly longer than the 17,000 year waiting period they think we have now. Hey, whatever helps you sleep at night. I can't get John Casey's volcano warning for the century out of my head. Folks, it is the last day of November, so if you want to give our children's book to your little one for the holidays, you'll want to get us those orders this week. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close here, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.